I'm gonna read one, ver one verse and share with you a toward the end of this message or uh, the, 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 the second part and that is while waiting. Uh, Acts, book of Acts chapter 1 verse 14 it says, these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. Mary the mother of Jesus. As I mentioned you know Mary received a visit from an angel and she has seen that God's angel said you're favored and that favor did not result in her running a multi-billionaire company. That favor did not result in her becoming an author. That favor resulted in her actually not having a super fancy wedding because now there's a rumor why she's pregnant but that favor resulted and she was raising a son of God. When, Sam, when she brought Jesus, the prophecy was given that a sword will pierce your heart. And that's exactly what some mothers go through is that painful season where she was seeing Jesus being crucified. But Jesus took care of his mother even while he was on the cross. And what I love about Mary is that she was not only Jesus' mother, she was Jesus' disciple. And the brothers of Jesus are here praying after Jesus' resurrection and one of them, James, became eventually the pastor of the Jerusalem church and wrote the epistle of James. And so this family ended up worshiping Jesus and praising Jesus. When Jesus rose from the dead, he gave his disciples a promise and he said this, I want you to stay in Jerusalem. Now you have to understand most of them from Galilee, were from Galilee. Galilee, Jerusalem, think of Yakima and Pasco. Okay, so in your mind, that's where they were from. They were from Yakima, they came to Pasco. All right, we'll make Jerusalem as the Pasco. Okay, it's a little bit bigger than Yakima. So Tri-Cities Tri -Cities is like the Jerusalem. So about 80 something miles away, that's where they were from. And then in Jerusalem is where Jesus got crucified. They were about to leave Jerusalem, but then they found out he rose from the dead. So he kept visiting them and they kind of stayed in Jerusalem. Right before he goes to heaven, Jesus gives them a promise. He says, I want you guys, I know you have your house there, your utility bills to pay, your job and everything. Don't go back to Yakima. Don't go back to Galilee. Don't go back to where you came from. I want you to permanently kind of stay here until the coming of the Holy Spirit. I'm giving you a promise. Something is about to shift. Something is about to change. And this Spirit, once He comes, He will do a few things to you. Is He will give you power. Now I know you already went and evangelized, cast out demons and did some other things but this will be another level. So there's 120 people, so a little bit more than what we see today. 120 people start gathering together and waiting. Somebody say waiting. So promise was given and they were waiting. Jesus didn't say when the promise will be fulfilled. He just says where the promise will be fulfilled. Let me say that again. He didn't say when the promise will be fulfilled. He said where the promise will be fulfilled. And I want to tell you something that every person in this room has a promise from God. If you have a family, you have a promise from God for your family. You have a promise of God for your health. You have a promise of God for your business. You have a promise of God for your spiritual life. God has a promise for you. And when God gives you a promise, you must understand is that there will be a waiting period between the promise and the fulfillment of the promise. There will be a waiting period from the book of Acts. I'm giving you the promise chapter 1 to book of Acts chapter 2 when the Pentecost comes in. There's a process between the promise and the Pentecost. Somebody say amen. amen. So what do you do while you're waiting? Three things I want to highlight. Number one, they prayed. While you're waiting for your child to come back to, to God. While you're waiting for your marriage to be restored. While you're waiting for the breakthrough that God promised in His Word in the area of our finances so that we can be a blessing to other people instead of constantly being in need or living from hand to mouth. While you're waiting for the documents to go through, while you're waiting for that sickness to be completely defeated as God promised in His Word, by His stripes you will be healed. While you're waiting for the reconciliation between you and your spouse, maybe you're going through a very rough patch. What do you do while you're waiting? God wants to fulfill His Word but you have to wait. Is waiting folding my hands and just we'll see what happens? Is waiting is I'm waiting for them to change? The way disciples waited, the Bible says they prayed continuously. We pray. God has given us a promise as a church that God will use our church to touch the world. 
the way we wait for that promise. We have a promise that people will be getting out of wheelchairs. We have a promise that this will be a massive movement. Not just the what we have today, it's going to be a massive movement that will touch the world. See, disciples already had 120 people. The average church today, the median church in the United States is about 70 people. The median age in the church in the United States is 72. The average church, the 50% of churches in the United States are below 100. So 120 people in Jerusalem 2000 years ago when the population was not 7 billion dollars, 120 people is a mega church. But Jesus wanted something more. See Jesus wasn't interested in making the church slightly bigger. He strategically placed them in Jerusalem. Why? Because in 40 days from now, in a few weeks from now, all the nations will come to Jerusalem and He wanted to strategically infect the nations of the world with His message. Forgive me for using the word infect. He wanted to infiltrate the nations through the small body of people. See Jesus thinks global, not just local. He thinks movement, not just a small gathering. Jesus thinks massive, not just a small maintenance thing. Jesus wants every church to grow. Jesus wants Hungry Gen not only to grow and become the large church. He wants Hungry Gen to infiltrate and to touch every aspect of our society. He wants the medicine world, the, the, the education world, the media world. He wants every world to be touched by the good news of His gospel. Why? Because what we're selling everyone needs. Everyone has an eternal soul. Not everybody might need glasses. Might not, not everybody might not need a car. Not everybody might need an extra layer of this or extra layer of that. But everybody needs salvation because everybody has an eternal soul. So the message God has given us to preach and to present is something everyone needs. Amen. And so he has this idea that He wants to cause an explosion to happen, a revival to break out, something vital to become viral, to go quickly without social media, without cameras, without newspapers, to go into all parts of the world quickly. He tells them, I want you to stay here and I want you to wait. And how you're waiting? They were praying. They started to pray. They didn't just pray, they prayed continuously. And I want to encourage you, if you are tired of waiting, waiting is not a waste of time if you're praying. Waiting always feels like a drag if you're not praying. Maybe you're praying for a spouse. God has given you a promise. The prophet came and gave you a word that he's coming on the horse. I, well, honestly, your future husband might be coming on the horse because gas prices are really high. Or you see this, you know, this Cinderella is going to come, you know, you have this vision, you know, I'm going to have a spouse and, and you're like, man, I'm waiting. What do you, what do you do? Well, do I need to just go and start signing up for all kinds of dating sites? Maybe, but you first need to pray and you need to pray consistently. You need to pray continually. Pay a price of making prayer permanent in your life. Prayer is our response to waiting. We don't wait for revival. We're not waiting for revival if we're not praying. Prayer is the only way we can show to God that we are waiting. Waiting is not, I need it, I don't have it. Waiting is that I'm praying. The moment I'm praying, God says, that means you're waiting. And God expects you to wait. He doesn't want you to just exist, meaning I want you to wait for it. I want you to anticipate for it. I want you to ask for it. In fact, Jesus Himself tells disciples to wait and He went to the Father and started to ask the Father. So you're not the only one that's asking, He's also asking because He is the High Priest. He intercedes on our behalf. Amen. The second thing that we need to do, not only we need to wait, we need to prepare. We need to prepare. Now disciples, after they started to pray and they prayed continually, the Bible says that in verse 15 that they chose a disciple to replace Judas. So some theologians, scholars say they should have waited for God to choose his own apostle like Apostle Paul, but they were doing something. They were not just waiting, they were preparing for what's about to come. When you are waiting for your child to come back home, Prepare as well. What do you need to do on your end? Is there something that you can improve on your attitude as your parent? 
Is there something that you can do on your end as a single person who is waiting for the person to come into your life? Uh, maybe let's start with getting out of debt. Maybe let's start with kicking back some habits that you should not allow in your life. Maybe let's start with, hey, maybe it's good time to improve this area or improve that area. Maybe it's good time to finish school. You need to prepare. As we are waiting for a greater revival to hit Tri-Cities, we got to prepare for it. We can't just pray and not plan. We can't just fast but we're not strategizing. We're not using what we can do right now. Oh, I'm just going to wait for more power. But are you using the power you already have? I'm just going to wait until God zaps me with so much anointing. But until He does that, I'm going to use the power He has given me, the revelation that I have, the experience that I have, the little bit of faith that I have, the little bit of oil that I have, and I'm going to start working it. I'm going to start exercising it. I'm going to start putting it into practice. Why? Because sometimes God will grow that which I use. Sometimes it's a supernatural. This tipping point happens in the realm of the Spirit where we just go from one realm into another over one night. But sometimes it's a gradual. And because we don't know what God is going to do, we have to pray and plan. Pray and prepare. Play, pray and then we also make plans. We take a next step. We hold a conference, we write a book, we release e-courses, we release small groups and we move forward. I know we're waiting for the new building you know to be finished and as much as I would love to have only one service on Sunday but for right now this is where we're at. We're waiting but we're not just waiting for the new building. We are pressing in as a church into the next level and even if that would mean three services, maybe one day even four services, as hard as that will be but we know that God has that day of Pentecost for Hungry Gen. God has that next level of explosion. God has that next level where things will go viral in a way we've never seen or even dreamed of. We only have been prophesied those things but until that day we gotta start planning. We gotta find our Matthias. We gotta start finding are this person and that person, this ministry and that ministry. Why? So by the time the Acts 2 comes in, we're not only prayed up, we also have plans. Because prayer prepares things. Planning prepares us. Prayer prepares the spirit realm. But when I begin to set plans in motion, when I begin to have a strategy, see it's not enough to pray for God to get you out of debt if you don't have a plan to get out of debt. It's not enough to say, Lord God, let the spirit of overweightness leave me in Jesus' name right now. But if you don't have a plan to cut back on carbs, it's not going to work. We have to pray and we got a plan. It's not enough also to say, God, send me a husband. But if you're locked up in your basement every single time that we have a youth gathering, you're like, man, I want God to supernaturally guide him into my house. Most likely it's not going to happen. Sister, you got to push yourself out there a little bit. Start an Instagram. You know, do, do, do something. <laughs> Post a selfie once in a while and we have good photographers, you know, ask Edder to take a few photos of the church and stuff. So yeah, you, you gotta not just pray, you gotta plan. Come on somebody. Are you with me? We pray, we plan. Now, if we plan but we don't pray, these plans are made out of flesh. But if we pray and pray and pray, we don't plan. We don't have a strategy. God's gonna bring people. You know, how is He gonna bring people to church? We have to invite them. But if He brings them in, we have to have a room for them. We have to have somebody at the front greeting them. Once they give their life to Jesus, somebody to follow up on them. You may say, well, God is going to, no, God is not going to do none of that. We have to do that. God works in partnership with us. And God is looking at all this waiting because while I am focused on the destination, I want that amazing revival explosion. God is looking not just at the destination, but at the development. How am I being developed right now? Am I preparing for that? Prayer prepares me, it prepares the answer. But there's one more thing that we need to do and that is we need to be plugged in. The third thing, so we pray, we plan and then we get ourselves plugged in. For them the Bible says is they continued in one accord. This wasn't each person praying separately. They were praying corporately. I want to invite you. Every person in this room is waiting for something in their area. Excuse me, waiting for something in an area of their life. Even if we have a breakthrough in one area, there's not one person in this room 
who doesn't have an area of their life they're currently waiting on God for and if you do have that area be careful because you might die tomorrow if you don't have absolutely nothing you're waiting for because that's part of our spiritual growth is we're always going from glory to glory God is always moving us God is always stretching us the amazing part is this is when you get together in the room of another waiter something begins to happen our faith links together that's why if you are alone and you're not plugged in into the community or to the church and you're waiting after a while your waiting will die prayer will just fizzle out your plans will begin to be so fruitless you're like man what's the point of even planning anything nothing really works I will plan after the day of Pentecost I will plan everything when I get married I will plan for everything once my kids get saved that's when I will be joyful that's when I will serve at the church and everything my friend do not postpone all of your life to that imaginary day because the moment you reach that day God will open another facet of your potential and His promise for your life and you will constantly grow from one miracle to another because if you don't have a need you don't need a miracle and sometimes these miracles we need are in our body in our finances in our family and God takes care of them then He opens a need for the world and He enlarges your heart and He says I want you to dream and wait and anticipate for something that could change the world Yes, your needs are taken care of. Yes, your bills are being paid for. Yes, you paid off your home. You paid off your house. That is amazing. But now the dream, the plan, the promise to maybe start an orphanage, to start a nonprofit, to do a humanitarian aid, to do a ministry, to go and start evangelizing, all of that God says, starts pushing on you and says, now I want you to wait for that and I want you to begin to dream about that. Don't cruise, don't get complacent. I want you to step into that. I fixed your problem so I can help you be hungry for your promise. I fixed your problem so I can stir your appetite to fulfill your potential. Because life is not just about fixing problems, it's about living our life to the fullest and dying empty. Amen. I want to encourage us. While waiting for God's promise, we pray consistently. We plan strategically and we get plugged in into a, a community of similar, like-minded waiters who are also waiting. When Mary got pregnant, God strategically sent her to Elizabeth so that the pregnant women will unite. And when she came into the room, Elizabeth's baby jumped. Why? Because Elizabeth carried a miracle child. And Mary had a miracle child. When you come to Hungry Gen, we don't want just your joy, emotion to jump. We want that which God has promised to be fed, nurtured. That you don't get, commit abortion with that promise. That you don't miscarry that promise. That we don't dumb it down and say, no, just, just, to just develop long suffering. Yes, we need long suffering, but the promises of God, we need to carry them into fruition. We need to walk into the chapter two of book of Acts in our life. Our church will experience, we are experiencing revival. What we see today in people's lives, the way they're being impacted is honestly, it's been a dream of ours when we started the church. To see the blessing that how God is using our church online is simply mind-blowing. It's incredible. But what God has promised, we haven't seen yet. What we believe for, we have not even seen nothing close to. What God wants to do in Tri-Cities, what God wants to do through Tri-Cities, He wants an explosion. He wants things that are vital, vital, deliverance, healing, to become viral. God is zealous over this earth. He loves every person who doesn't know Him and hates Him. He died for them and God will not settle for my size, your size dream. If we have 10,000 people coming to the church, it won't make a dent in Tri-Cities. 
even that dream is too small. God is not wanting to grow a largest organization in Tri-Cities. He's growing a kingdom and that kingdom wants to fill the whole earth. We're strategically positioned in Jerusalem today. You know why? Because of media. What Jerusalem was to the disciples 2,000 years ago, social media is to us today. We're strategically positioned here. We know where the promise is coming. It's going to come here. It's going to hit our generation like never before. Because today when a miracle happens, it goes viral. Like the healing of a boy in Mexico. In Mexico, somebody recorded with the phone and it hit over 2.3 million views, 60 seconds on social media. We live in the generation and, and, and day today where things travel from one place to another in seconds, not in days and in months. That means the outpouring that God wants to do is strategically, it wasn't in the Galilee, it was in Jerusalem because Jerusalem was a strategic hub of all the pilgrims, strategic hub of all the visitors that will come there and get filled. We just experienced through COVID how things can go viral. I was in Philippines when the first person who had COVID arrived in Tri-Cities. We were in Philippines, we had a large stadium that they were supposed to use right before we arrived. They closed that stadium and they start closing pretty much all the large gatherings. Old movie theater, they were able to sneak in only at 1200 people. They allowed only pastors and leaders there. So we were afraid we wouldn't even get out of Philippines because the borders were already being closed. First person. And then only some month later, you know, first person died in China from COVID. And then, you know, one more person died. And it seems like, oh yeah, at this rate, it's going to take. And then next month, next, next thing you know, a lot of people are getting infected. Fear breaks out. People are beginning to die. And almost a million people just in the United States that passed away from this. It got to the point where everyone was locked down in their house. And interesting, nobody went to school how to spread COVID. There was no class in the university. Nobody even wanted to spread COVID. They became carriers of whatever they got infected with and they spread that on their own. Now, the gospel doesn't spread like COVID. The gospel does require our, our volunteerism. We have to volunteer to it. But the gospel has a lot of volunteers. I'm one of them. You're one of them. And the gospel spreads not through teaching, but we share. Yes, we teach, but we also demonstrate. We touch another person and I believe the same way as, as COVID went viral. The same thing, revival, the last day revival is going to go viral. It's going to go like crazy and America is ready for another wave of awakening, another wave of revival. It's going to be deliverance. It's not going to be just one big shot preacher. It's going to be everyday believers being used by God. My friend, we are positioned for that. Members becoming ministers. God is raising up the apostolic, the five-fold ministry and that is not just to hold large crusades and all of us just snap pictures with our favorite celebrity preachers but that we all do the work that God has called us in our homes, in our workplaces and that we are used mightily by God to do His work. Can somebody say Amen? My friend, while waiting we pray. While we're waiting we're planning and while waiting we're plugged into a local church where we are connected to other believers. If you've been coming to Hungry Gen I want you to embrace our prayer life. We have morning prayers Monday through Friday but Wednesday is the special gathering of the church for prayer at six o'clock. I want to invite you as well to the things that we are participating in, the plans that God has for our, for, for our church. Pray for our new building. Pray for the plans for that new building. If God puts on your heart, begin to give above and beyond so that that construction will move forward. And lastly, I want to invite you, in just two weeks from now, we are starting our small groups. Transformation, my friend, doesn't just happen at the altar. It happens in the small group. You heard from our friend today. He was in the small group. People prayed for him. It wasn't me that prayed for him. It wasn't one of our pastors. It was the everyday believers filled with the same Spirit of God that each one of us are filled with, gathering in the home. So we want you to be plugged in to a small group. We want you to be too plugged in to another believer. If you come to Hungry Gen and maybe you're like, man, but I'm not a social butterfly. I don't need to know everybody. I'm completely cool. My social, club, my social cup is already filled. It's not just about you. Maybe it's time for you to have your own small group. Maybe you need to now provide community for other people because as the church gets bigger, it needs to stay smaller. When pandemic breaks out, if another one breaks out or when the other one breaks down, breaks out, 
if persecution breaks out and I believe that persecution will come we will see that even in the United States our church we pandemic and persecution proof if we do the church like the first church did it not in large cathedrals but in homes first 300 years the church did not have a building they did not have a nonprofit status and pastors were not on a salary but what they had is they had everyday believers filled with the Holy Ghost and having the responsibility on their shoulders to know the Word, to know the Lord and to know that we are here on this earth on a mission. We're not here just to get healthy, wealthy, get rich and just one day Jesus will come and sweeps us before the bad boy Antichrist comes. No, we are here to preach the good news, tell our neighbors about Jesus and we have to know the Word. Come on. And how do we convince that our way is the right way? Very simple. We got something nobody else has. We got signs and wonders. We don't rely on our knowledge though it's important. We don't rely on our degree though it's vital. We rely on signs and wonders. When we pray God confirms His Word with signs and wonders. He doesn't just confirm the minister, Benny Hinn, Rayhard Bonnke. He doesn't just confirm Billy Graham. He confirms His Word. And if it's in your mouth, He will confirm it. After 300 years the church lived like that. It filled the whole area where Roman Empire was dominating. It got so crazy that Romans were blaming the church for whatever they could blame the church for because the church was thriving. They couldn't be crushed. They couldn't be crushed. Why? Because you can't crush grass grassroot movement. You can't crush that. What the, what's happening with the China church right now is the same way. And it was when the Constantine made everything legal, Christianity legal and gave church the status of honor. Miracles became not essential. Small groups? Why do we need to gather in small groups when the government pays for big cathedrals? Believers? Why do they need to know the Bible? The pastor knows the Bible. The Bible was taken away from the pew. The believer was no longer the priest. The believer was no longer the minister. There's one minister we pay for. We keep him on the staff to teach us the word and all we have to do is just come in, listen to the thing, pay our tithe and leave. And my friend, and that's where the dark age has begun. We're not in dark ages, we're in revival. Every member is a minister. Everyone is called to be a witness. We're filled with the Holy Spirit, but there is an explosion that is coming. I believe that it's coming to Tri Cities and it's coming to Hungry Gen. But for that explosion, let's pray, let's plan, and let's get plugged in. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed this content and this was a blessing to you, would you help us and hit thumbs up so that it could help more people to discover this video. It costs you nothing, but it can go a long way to help with the algorithm. As well as if you're not subscribed to our channel, hit subscribe, click on the bell so that you can be reminded each time that we upload videos. Thank you so much for being a part of this community. If you're interested in learning more about Hungry Gen, our internship, our conferences, deliverance, and so many other things, go to hungrygen.com for more information. And as always, remember, better is not good enough, the best is yet to come.